Hey everyone, this is Daniel. Now that you are a while loop, for loop, and plotting expert, you're ready to go into the area of plotting animation. For this specific lecture, we'll be covering 2D plot animations. So let's get started. First, let's go ahead and type our clear all and CLC. And let me actually explain roughly what we'll be doing. What we want to do is a two link robotic arm type of thing that swings over a range of angles for both links. So let's say this is the base joint and the arm starts here in the first link and the next one here. This will be the first angle relative to the ground and then the second arm will have an angle relative to the direction of the first arm. So link one, link two. And then we want to move this arm, let's say, to here for a new angle relative to the ground for link one and a new angle for link two. So that's the goal. For this one, we'll set the length of the first angle. Let's just call it R1. We'll set it equal to 2. And R2, we'll set it equal to 2 as well. The range of angles, we'll play with them. So let's get started. So R1 equals 2, R2 equals 2. Good. Next, we'll have the angle 1, or we'll call it T1, going from 30 degrees in steps of 1, sorry, point 0.1, to 60 degrees. <clears throat> the sine and cosine functions, in, or all trigonometric functions in MATLAB, work with radians, not degrees, so we'll have to change this from degrees to radians. So T1 equals T1 times pi divided by 180 to convert, I'll write it convert convert from degrees to radians now okay t2 I want actually be a negative increase in degrees or an angular position so I'm gonna go from 20 in steps of 0.1 to 50 but I put the negative in parentheses. And the reason is for this range, you know, with step size, you always have to be an increase in uh, value. So I put the negative to go from negative 20 to negative 50. If I just did negatives, uh, it wouldn't really work since it's decreasing in value. And then we'll do the same thing we did here. Just change this 2 and 2. And now let's define the ground, x0 equal to 0, y0 equal to 0. And let's go and define the position of the next joint. So the next joint, y1, so basically the end of the first link will be located at y1, which is equal to r1, so the length of the link, times sine of the angle from basic trigonometry. And then x1 will be the same thing, except we'll use the cosine function. Now, we will now define, let me just copy and paste and we'll be somewhat similar. We'll define y2 and x2, where y2 is basically y1 plus a given value, and x2 is x1 plus a given value, that value will be the length of that second link times the angle, uh, the overall angle. And since we measured the angle in the previous picture I showed at the beginning, I showed it, uh, let me just draw it real quick so you can see it. If this is link 1 and then this is link 2, the angle of link 2 is expressed relative to the one of link 1. So for MATLAB to understand that link, we need to give it the overall angle, which is basically going to be T1 
plus T2. I know we're going in the opposite direction, but if it's negative, we'll just take care of itself. If the link would happen to be here, we would be doing T1 plus T2 for the overall angle. So, basically we need to do T1 plus T2. And let the negative angle take care of itself. You don't need to mess with typing negatives inside the equation. So now, to do this plotting animation, we first, we're going to use a for loop, so let's define the length uh, or the total number of iterations that the for loop is going to run. We'll use the length function, as we've done in the past. In this case, you can use any of the angles, either T1 or T2, since they're both, in this case, equal. They have a range of 30 degrees, and they need to be equal, since you're adding them. If you had different ranges, you would just have to manipulate it such that they have an equal number of elements. Otherwise, it wouldn't work out. You wouldn't be able to do an element by element addition. So now we create a for loop that goes, let's call the variable t as the for loop uh, variable. And it'll go from 1 to n. And now we'll use the plot function. So plot. And you open brackets. Then you do comma, set of brackets, and then the style we're going to print it. So we'll do this with a plus because you want to see each joint. So now in between brackets you're just going to put put all the not, all the points you want to plot that are going to be joined by a line. This is actually <clears throat> it's going to be x0 comma x1 comma x2. Fairly simple. And then y0 comma y1 comma y2. Right? But you cannot just say y1, because this is a vector and this is a scalar. This is just 0, right? Well, this has a range of numbers, so you have to reference which one. You want t. So as the for loop runs, you're going to be plugging in a different number into the plot function, and you're going to be getting a different result being plotted. Let's define the limits. We know the overall length of the arm is equal to 4, since it goes link number one is two and link number two is two so as long as we have a screen or a limit of plotting equal to you know from zero to four for both directions we should be good since this arm is not going to be pointing down so we do the x limb with between parentheses the limits using brackets do the same for the y limb for the y limits And you don't want this to happen so quick you don't get to see it, so we'll use a pause where the pause between iterations is defined in seconds inside the pause function. And we type end, and now we should be able to click run and see what happens. And there you have it. You see how the arm is moving as it sweeps through the motion. And you saw it. Now, something interesting to note. Let's run it again. You see that the second link is pretty much staying at the same angle relative to the ground the whole time. <clears throat> the reason this is happening is T1 was going from 30 to 60, so it increased by 30, but T2 changed from negative 20 to negative 50. Here we were adding them, so at first T1 would be, or T1 plus T2 would be. 30 minus 20, that's 10. And here you have 60 minus 50, that's still 10. So the arm, second arm is staying uh, at the same angle relative to the ground as the motion occurs. You can then go ahead and play with these numbers if you want and get something. Now we see it started more inclined throughout the motion. If you did something weird and changed the order in which you type this in here, so let's say I did this, you would get totally something that didn't really make sense, but heck, you can do whatever you want. See? And there you have it. 
Well, let me put it back as we had it. So this covers the lecture or tutorial, what do we want to call it, for 2D plotting animations. Basically what we learned is that as long as we have a vector of the data points we want to plot over time, and we know the length, which we can determine using the length function, we can use the plot function inside a for loop while we index over the for loop variable and use a pause, and you get yourself a plot which varies over time, which is essentially an animation. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.